Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm joined here today with SBA Regional Administrator Mark Hayward, Commerce Corporation uh, CEO Liz Tanner, Commerce Secretary Liz Tanner, uh, Acting President of the Commerce Corporation Bill Ash, the Director of the Department of Public Works Patricia Coyne Fagg, and the Deputy Director of the Providence Emergency Management Agency David Radcliffe. Uh, much like many other communities across the country, uh, this year's storms have put Providence's stormwater system at capacity. And last night we saw another night of heavy rains here in the city and in other places in Rhode Island. And I wanted to recount some of the things that we've been doing and speak a little bit about uh, impacted businesses overnight. Uh, we've been working diligently throughout the summer to coordinate and mitigate flood effects here in the city of Providence. Uh, all departments have been pitching in to make sure that we're protecting our businesses and our neighbors. Uh, along with public safety officials and volunteers, the hardworking men and women of the Providence Public Works Department have been dredging canals, clearing storm drains, uh, and working with neighbors and business owners to add resiliency measures to their property. As soon as we were alerted to potential of heavy rains yesterday, our DPW crews went out to known flood prone areas to clear drains and to prepare for the rains. I want to thank our teams who were out late last night and into the morning working to resolve the flooding that we saw. Uh, I was out in the city uh, relatively late last night and saw firsthand how diligent and hardworking the DPW department was and Providence Police and Providence Fire were uh, to ensure everyone's safety in the city. Uh, fire, police, public works were activated, streets were closed, and uh, we helped evacuate some neighbors and also uh, make sure that no cars got stuck after police had arrived. The fire department, with assistance from the Department of Public Works and Providence Police, assisted over 30 civilians to higher ground, uh, particularly those right here on Branch Avenue, which saw some of the worst flooding last night. Recent rainstorms are an example of the extreme weather uh, that we're starting to see more frequently. And even the most robust sewer system can't handle as much rain as we've been receiving in recent storms in such a short period of time. We're going to continue to uh, invest in our outdoor, outdated stormwater uh, system. We are working on other major infrastructure such as our hurricane barrier and integrating resiliency measures into all of our city planning and have made significant investments through our capital improvement plan to prepare for regrettably more storms like this in the future. Additionally, Providence Emergency Management Agency is collecting all available data uh, to make sure that we're doing proper analysis to refine our future efforts and to better coordinate city services. We need everyone's help uh, in the long term to think about ways in which they can help keep stormwater from reaching the storm drains in the first place uh, through infrastructure changes to their own property, to businesses, and we'll be making those changes in our comprehensive plan this year. I want to remind residents, because we are anticipating more heavy rainfall tomorrow, Wednesday, to please call 311 for city services. Now this is not an emergency number, uh, but this is if your stormwater uh, system is overflowing, your drain needs to be cleared, uh, you have a known issue on your street, please use 311. In the middle of the storm, if you're experiencing an emergency, that's when you call 911. Uh, like I said, we're following tomorrow's storm closely. We're expecting the potential for another one to four inches of rainfall. As has been the case, frankly, throughout the summer, the ground is soaked. The reservoirs and including Canada Pond behind us is full and so when we have these sequential storms even if it doesn't seem like a lot of rainfall we experience flooding again because the, the system is at capacity and so our crews uh, will be out again tonight and into tomorrow particularly in the known flood zones in Providence on Charles Street, Valley Street, Admiral Street, Eddy Street in addition to right here on Branch Avenue. Uh, we ask residents and business owners to help prepare for out, uh, more storms ahead. And of course, we're following closely the potential for a hurricane later this weekend. And so uh, we'll have more information on the potential for that later in the week. It's still too early to talk about the uh, track of that storm. 
Uh, I'm going to briefly turn the mic over to Liz Tanner and Mark Hayward to speak a little bit about business re business resources that may be available to impacted businesses, and we'll come up and take all your questions. Thank you, Brett. Hi, my name is Liz Tanner. I'm the Rhode Island Commerce Secretary. I have with me here Mark Hayward, SBA uh, Regional Director here. And we are here essentially to assess the situation for these businesses. They are particularly busy today. It is our goal, not unlike the Block Island fire from a couple weeks ago, to come back to talk to them when they are ready to talk to us about uh, the resources that are available from both state and federal um, governments. Uh, Governor McKee wishes to extend his concern for all these businesses, um, and we want to make sure that the businesses know that we are here to listen to what their concerns are. We've also been in touch starting last night with both the mayor of North Providence and of Johnston. It appears that there are no businesses affected in North Providence, and the mayor of Johnston is still assessing the number of businesses in Johnston that were affected by this rain. Uh, but we do hope that this uh, will be the last of our businesses that are affected, and, but if there are, we'll come back out and be working with them again. Mark, is there anything you want yeah, to Yeah, just simply, we're working very closely with the mayor and his staff, as well as Secretary Tanner and Commerce RI, Bill Ash, to make sure that we're addressing all of the needs of the businesses. Right now, we're in a uh, information gathering situation similar to what we did on Block Island, uh, and we were very successful in getting a, an administrative declaration on Block Island in less than five days, and uh, hopefully we'll get as much information as we possibly can and move forward from there. I'll take questions. Captain Turner, will there be any arrests for the people that were doing the looting last night? Uh, yes. Uh, Providence Police is actively investigating the reports of looting in the plaza just across from us. Uh, they're reviewing security footage and talking to the short store owners right now. And if it's determined that there was looting that took place, uh, those responsible will be held accountable. Providence Police are actively investigating. Well, Mayor, you said, you said if, but the Providence Police did come out and state that there were two businesses that had been looted. I believe both stations have that video. I've seen people coming in and out. We have storefront owners who said individuals are coming out with tote bags full of clothes, shoes, sneakers. So we say if, but the fact that Providence Police are saying that this, this did happen last night. There's a lot of mixed reports from last night and we're not in any way disputing uh, the business owners and we are actively working with each and every one of them and any looting that occurred will be uh, prosecuted and, uh, and the police are actively investigating. But there's a lot of security footage to go through in addition to DOT footage from the bridge. Uh, so we're, we're working closely. There's, there's no world in which uh, we give a pass to anyone who may have acted illegally last night. Uh, it's just in the midst of a storm with a lot of individuals footage including cell phone cameras and otherwise uh, it takes just a few days to kind of sort through exactly what happened. Mayor, may I say that uh, Providence is already struggling with flooding now and Hurricane Lee does end up impacting us. Do you think that we'll be prepared and that our viewers will be prepared? So uh, Providence has uh, trained for years on uh, on hurricanes and uh, and my administration has already gone through multiple trainings uh, for the new members of our team. The leadership at Providence Emergency Management has been in place for several years and so uh, we have some of the best emergency management professionals in the state working here in the city of Providence and so in that respect I believe we are as prepared as we can be. Uh, but you were right in that the state of our groundwater, our reservoirs, our rivers and streams uh, has the potential to increase the damage or outcome of even the mildest hurricane that we might experience. And so we're taking it very seriously. Pima is in regular contact with the National Weather Service, with FEMA and REMA, the Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency. All the departments are working well and speaking with each other regularly. And as we get a little bit closer to the end of the week, when we feel like we will have a higher degree of confidence on the track of this storm, uh, we will brief the public in much more detail. Uh, but we are prepared, but we also know that the impact could be great given all of the rain we've experienced this summer. I have a couple of, um, please. In uh, Fox Point, you guys announced uh, conversations with a hurricane barrier yes. for a few months over at Fox Point in downtown. But how about proactive measures and some lower income? Sure. Uh, so it is important to note that the uh, the hurricane barrier itself, what people think of as the barrier, which is the, the big gates in the river, is run by the Army Corps of Engineers and receives regular maintenance. The city this year has invested in the uh, street gates 
uh, that are in both Fox Point and on Eddy Street in South Providence. And those street gates have received long overdue maintenance to ensure that they would function properly in the event of a major uh, storm surge or hurricane. Uh, we have made other significant storm sewer upgrades throughout the city, including in low income and marginalized communities, uh, which is separate from the hurricane barrier entirely and protects against instances like what we experienced last night and over the weekend. Um, a hurricane itself is an entirely uh, different risk than heavy rainfall. And so uh, there's been over $20 million in storm sewer upgrades uh, in the capital improvement plan in this year's budget. Uh, we have uh, increased the staffing in our sewer department and have worked with uh, neighborhood groups on other uh, what they would refer to as green infrastructure strategies. I, I spoke earlier about needing to work with homeowners, residents, uh, and business owners to try to help us keep some of the water from hitting the storm sewers in the first place. We're never going to be able to build a sewer system that will catch every drop of water. And so the better uh, strategy is to help people remove pavement from lots that have been entirely paved over where the only place for the water to go is into the sewer to do, uh, have strategies like rain barrels and bioswales so that we can trap the rainwater where it falls and to let it work its way out naturally so that we don't have to treat it or have an overflowed sewer system and those strategies are all outlined in the city's climate resiliency plan and the, cli the city's climate resiliency plan has a uh, particular focus to what we call climate justice zones, which are neighborhoods that feel the effect of climate change more acutely, which are disproportionately lower income, uh, marginalized communities of color, uh, areas in South Providence and others. And so there's been significant uh, investments in those neighborhoods and we will continue to execute on our climate justice plan accordingly. Uh, there's not a funding stream currently for uh, redoing a parking lot, for example, but we do have significant uh, funding available for trees, uh, which is, and the uh, tree wells are a way to capture rainwater. It also helps with urban heat island effects, uh, and those resources are actually being specifically restricted to the climate justice zones, uh, and there'll be other programs as we continue to implement the climate justice plan.